What is up, Fight Fans? Welcome to the Split Decision Podcast, brought to you by the Backwards Hat Boys, a.k.a. the Bang Bang split em Gang uh, with Athletically Declined Sports. I am Johnny the Dad. And I'm Angel Kicks Balls. And I'm Captain. Planet? What? Oh, yeah. Just- yeah. Sorry, my mic. Did you? Did you? Oh, I, I thought you were going full WWE where you have a full name for a while and then they just shorten it to your first name. <laughs> Vince took his name. Fan treatment. Uh, but we are going to do the same thing that we did yesterday, in which we are going to give you a full rundown of night two this time of WrestleMania. We're going to tell you how we got here. Uh, who you should root for, who you should hate, all that good stuff so that you are prepared for WrestleMania weekend. Because I feel like we're going to have a lot of people jumping on this pro wrestling bandwagon this weekend. And hey, as far as I'm concerned, the more the merrier. You're all welcome. So we want to get you set up so that you, uh, you know what you're watching. But... With that being said, let's start with the first match of night two. Guys, what do we think about Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, otherwise known as the Pride, against the final testament of Karrion Cross and AOP? I think Bobby needs to go back to doing old Bobby things. Get away from the Pride, go back to normal. I think this is when... Carrion and the authors just crush them to set them off to their moon to do their own thing. And this is the perfect time to break up Bobby and the Street Profits. Let them go back to the old school Street Profits, where it was the big thing. Everyone was behind it. And have Bobby back to old, just God Bobby. God mode? The Almighty. The Almighty. I want Ford Montez Ford to go on a solo run. Me too. Me too. I love Montez Ford, and I like I like Angelo Dawkins too, but I think Angelo Dawkins needs Montez Ford, and Montez Ford doesn't need and uh, Angelo Dawkins. Uh, here's my thought on it. I think this whole thing has been a little bit rushed, like, uh. This is since the Royal Rumble. Um, two new fat, well, kind of new factions like Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits were already kind of together. Uh, but the uh, the last testament is kind of been rushed since uh, they haven't gotten all that much screen time since Royal Rumble, and now they're opening Mania Night 2. Uh, I like everybody involved. I, like, I love Bobby Lashley, like the Street Profits a lot. Uh, I like Karrion Cross and AOP. I just think the match itself has been, there hasn't been great buildup to this match. So, like, I'm having trouble telling new fans, like, oh, here's what you need to know leading up to this because it's like there's really not been that much leading up to this. True. Uh, I, I also, I don't know where I see final test. If we're talking after uh, Mania, I don't know where I see the final testament filling in. Like, are they supposed to kind of replace the judgment day as the, you know, kind of creepy faction or whatever? Because that was supposed to be judgment day. But <clears throat> what I think it is, I think this is the ones to replace the white six. You Whenever think? they did the Bray thing, I think this is the one to replace it all. Yeah, the only problem with that is Karrion Cross ain't exactly Bray Wyatt. No. So. That's why y'all need to watch the documentary to see what happened at the end. I have... Tonight's the night. To Tonight's the I night. I need to finish it. I've watched the first half. I, I, I need to finish I'm holding it. holding my tongue because I want to say what happened at the end. It leads okay, to I, something. You need to watch I, it for me. Spoil it for me. I don't care. 
I, I, I've already kind of had it spoiled for me uh, that it kind of teases a, an Uncle Howdy return. Is that true? Oh, I, yeah. did see, I did just see that on Twitter, actually. So, But that's all I know, that that was supposedly teased. Um, I just don't know how I feel about that with no Bray Wyatt. But Bo, Bo might be able to do it. Maybe. I, I do like Bo Dallas. Um, do y'all have any other thoughts on this opening opening match? I think no. it's just a good start, just to get the crowd. All right. Yeah, I think it'll be a good match. Like I, the the Street Profits rarely put on a, a stinker, and mm-hmm. AOP is a great tag team. And then Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross, they could, you could run that on any given SmackDown or Raw, and it would be a banger. So, you know, it's going to be a good match. I just don't think there's been that much leading up to it. It's just kind of there. But uh, next we got a very highly anticipated one, by by me anyways, and I think by y'all, uh, LA Knight versus AJ Styles. Which one of y'all wants to take this one? Tell us how we got here. Do it, Cap. Do it, Cap. This feels like bad blood all over again, going all the way back to TNA. Started there, bad feuds, bad blood, led up to AJ leaving. Then LA Knight thought, well, AJ thought LA Knight forgot all the stuff he did to him back in TNA days. Then it all slowly started connecting back together when LA Knight came back here to WWE. All started with, was it the, they redid the feud, well, redid a feud that they had with Randy and Triple H, the home scene with the cops, the stalking. Great. I love that. Great. And if the rumor is true, what AJ has planned for Mania I think it's going to be a chef's kiss. Bringing back that old hoodie. The old hoodie. The old theme from TNA. So Ooh. for the people that are uh, that are new, that are going to be jumping on, maybe watching wrestling for the first time in a long time, who should they root for in this match? For me, it's LA Knight. Yeah. Uh, LA Knight, you go to the moon. And it's not anything like you should hate AJ. AJ is great. Uh, But I just think for a new person coming in, uh, watching wrestling for the first time or the first time in a long time, LA Knight is a guy that you could jump right in at kind of the ground level and he could be your favorite wrestler. And it would be completely a, a perfectly valid favorite wrestler for anybody to have. So... I just think the upside on LA Knight moving past WrestleMania is like, yeah, get on, jump on that bandwagon if you're if you're new to wrestling, and you'll have a good time. I, I'm just so shocked how how jacked AJ Styles is. Dude, he looks great. Like, jacked. holy crap! It's like man. it looks like two megastars fighting. So this is awesome. Like, I bet you if you like look at old pictures of them when they first started feuding in TNA. Night and day difference. Because mm-hmm. AJ is jacked. I'm, I, I don't know, I'm rooting for AJ Styles. I just like AJ Styles. He's he's one of my favorites. Because I, I was one of those kids watching TNA back in the day. And it was for AJ Styles. Which, also perfectly valid. Maybe there's somebody who hasn't watched wrestling since TNA had the six-sided ring. And they can they can jump in and be like, "Holy crap! AJ Styles is still going at it." Oh yeah, and he's still very good. So, you know, I think this is going to be a great match. This is uh, this is one. For nineteen, it could be the these are the two matches that I I thought uh, were not main events but could steal the show is between the Usos Street Fight and this match, like. One of those matches could potentially steal the entire weekend. True. Hold on, guys. We're right back. Gotta check on my wings. Ooh. Angels, my 
Angel likes wingies. He's got wingies coming in. Um, do you have anything else about uh, LA? I think LA Knight, uh, the reason I think that he will be very uh, appealing to a a new audience or an audience that's been out of, because how, how often have you heard that? Like recently, um, oh, this is the first time I've watched wrestling since I was a kid. Like all of, I've all heard, of AD. yeah, like I've heard so many people say that. And LA Knight is a straight up throwback to the to the Attitude Era, like yeah. the way he talks, built. the way he looks, the way he's built, the his character, like really a nineties. Yeah, he's a throwback, and he's awesome. So it's like he might really speak to a lot of people. Like, oh, this reminds me of when I was a kid. So. If you don't follow wrestling that much, but you used to play the old video games, LA Knight was the model for all the wrestlers' interests, the moves. He did everything for W was it WWE No Mercy? He did all the SmackDown versus Raw. Um, all the body models. It was him doing everything. Yep. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know that. That's pretty freaking cool. He said it on a documentary. He did it all. Yeah, there's videos of it. I'm doing it too. Pretty dope. He said the favorite one he did, did love to do was The Rock. But the only thing he had to get down was that eyebrow, and he finally got it down. Same. So that's actually Ellie Knight's face doing the eyebrow. With I can't. I, I can't over. do the eyebrow. Uh, I've uh-huh. tried for years. I can't do it. <laughs> now we know why he hates the rock so much. <laughs> yeah, I hate him because his eyebrows. <laughs> uh, night winning. I also have night winning. Uh, this one, Angel, you got. I got the hey, phenomenal, hey, phenomenal one. one. Uh, that one could go either way because I think that with. Uh, like storylines moving forward, it's kind of a win-win. Like either way you slice it, whoever wins that match, you can do a lot with it. So there's some of these that it's like, oh, it doesn't make sense for this person to win or whatever. This isn't one of those. Like either one, whoever wins, you're like, okay, we can build off of that. Um, All right, so next match we got the United States Championship Triple Threat. The champ, Logan Paul, which might surprise uh, people that are, you know, new to wrestling or haven't watched in a while. He is the United States champion uh, versus my boy, Randy, Randy Orton. I can never get that point right, but Randy uh, and Kevin Owens. So, Angel, how did we get here? Oh, man, how did we get here? All right, Logan Paul. Defeating KO at Elimination Chamber via Brass Nux. Um And then Randy Orton got involved because he also knocked him out at the Elimination Chamber. Oh, wait, when did he be? Yeah, this is all happened in the Elimination Chamber. So, yeah, he knocked everyone out. And then now everyone's coming after that title. And backstory, Randy Orton needs to win this one. And he is going to be a Grand Slam champion. And I think... For that reason, I am going with Randy Orton. He needs a grand slam, baby. Yeah, Randy Orton definitely deserves to hold that belt uh, as the last belt he needs in his Infinity Gauntlet. You know, uh, he. I think it makes perfect sense. Logan Paul has been a good champion, but you want that belt defended more. And, you know... I don't know. I I just feel like Kevin Owens winning doesn't really make sense. I don't feel like the fans are clamoring for Kevin Owens to hold the title right now. Uh, I like Kevin Owens. Nothing against him. I just feel like it, he's gotten a little bit stale. Um, and like why, why did they even break up Sammy and and uh, KO? They didn't really. If everything feels forced, like there was no plan here. Just like, hey, just put him. Just put him in the titles. I yeah, the titles. Uso bloodline thing with him, which did great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Sammy did amazing as the honorary use, but after that, I think they should have put those two back together. 
that would have been yeah. great in that in that ladder they match. Be, yeah, they would have been great in the six pack uh, tag match. Because you know, uh, Kevin has no problem jumping off the ladder. I was at the first SmackDown back from COVID. Him jumping off the top of that ladder. And Sammy perfect. has no problem taking big bumps. So somebody, while I don't really see Sammy being the one to do a move off the ladder or or something like that, I could see him being the one to take it. Mm-hmm. And you need that too. You need both in that match. So uh, I, I thought that would have been better. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's time for Randy to hold this belt finally. It's been a while since he's held a title too. <laughs> Yeah, and I hope it's a good long title run too. Like, just Randy with a belt over his shoulder just looks good. You know, mm-hmm. you need it, it always fits. Um, all right, so moving on, we're making quick time. Wait, who do we got? Who do we got winning this? Oh, who do we got winning this? I got Randy. Randy, Randy, all around. Um, okay, side gets RKO there too. Oh, yes. Through the table. Yeah, just KO and Randy just putting him through everything. I wouldn't be surprised if Logan Paul did some like shady stuff and retains. Um but I feel like that would be like robbing but the this fans is a triple threat, so it was no DQ. Like, oh I'm here up my friend. Oh yeah, there is no DQ, you're right. But Mike, everybody get RKO'd. It's perfect time to bring in Mike Tyson. Knock out Jake Paul. I'm mean Logan Paul. We might see Jake. Who knows? We might see Jake too in there. Who knows? That would be crazy. I don't think they would do anything. They got a fight coming up. So a lot a of money on the line there. A fight. Uh, a, a fight. A fight. You know, fight's but. a fight. <laughs> Uh, which, quick off of uh, WrestleMania real quick, did y'all see that that got upgraded from an exhibition to an actual professional bout? Oh, really? Finally. I didn't yeah. Like that he ain't taking no dive. I heard it was like boxing with a helmet on. I was like, I'm not watching that. Like I said, he's I, not going to do it. It's going to be a helmet. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we'll see uh, Jake Paul die on national television. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, all right, back to WrestleMania. Uh, next, we have the second women's titles match the WWE Women's Championship, EO Sky, the champ versus Bailey. Guys, I'm not that excited about this one, I'll be honest. I was at first, then it just went meh. Let's go, Bailey, though. I feel like they draw, they drew out the whole demise of damage control too long because like they teased it way before they actually did it and then it was like when it happened it was like okay yeah we've seen that coming for months Mm. um i'll take i'll take this one for uh for fans coming in the eo sky and bailey used to be in the same faction Uh, it was called damage control Bailey was the leader of that faction um, and was kind of putting over younger talent. Uh, she was kind of the the uh, the coach or the mentor of the group uh, and then, you know, had a lot of younger talent with her. So much so that EO Sky, one of the younger talents, ends up winning the championship. Uh, and for months, there was like kind of this whole mean girls thing type going on where – the rest of damage control was kind of talking crap about Bailey behind her back. Um, it finally all came to a head after, uh, shortly after the rumble, right? Uh, I believe the week after the rumble or right around there, uh, they all turn on Bailey, boot her out of the group. And then, uh, Oh yeah. Cause Bailey had won the rumble. Bailey won the women's rumble. So she gets to pick uh, what title she goes after. Well, they all bully her and everything to the point that she's like, you know what? I'm coming after your title. And chooses to face EO Sky here at WrestleMania. And yeah, I mean, I have trouble thinking there will be literally anyone rooting for EO Sky 
in this one? Like Bailey's pretty universally liked, I think, right? Am mm-hmm. I off on that? I think this is where we get her little hugger gimmick slowly coming back. I wouldn't be mad at that. I That was one of those things where at the time I didn't really like it. And I was like, oh, this is corny and this is dumb. But then when it went away and we got the more serious kind of heel Bailey, I was like, ah, actually, I kind of like the Bailey being everybody's best friend thing better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I have Bailey winning this one. I feel like if EO wins it, it kind of just craps on the entire storyline. So, and EO is also the least charismatic champion in the history of WWE. <laughs> like, she's a- she gives us nothing. Let's be honest. I think no, it really. was just the <laughs> Japanese fans. Yeah, but if that was the case, give it to Asuka because she actually like mm. has charisma. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like this got downplayed. They this downplayed Bailey's Royal Rumble win. It, it just downplayed everything. They're not getting the main event spot. They're not. They're not even the co-main event. They're just. They're right there in the middle. Defeats the purpose of the whole Royal Rumble women's thing. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask how you guys felt about that. I feel like it sucks that that happened, but it's also... It's the rock. They kind of wrote themselves into a corner here of like, this is the match that people care about far less than, than Rhea and Becky or any of the other matches that are placed above it. Like, it's it's where it should be, but you you did kind of make Bailey winning the Rumble look far less significant because you could have done this without her winning the Rumble. Yeah, so yeah, I think I think the winner should have faced Rhea. Mm-hmm. Not not then the Chamber winner wins gets the other one because they had their own storyline and I was like, why oh, y'all like y'all have your own storyline already? Like Rhea didn't really have a. St- like a strong storyline because there was multiple women trying to get her title. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this one, the build up to it has been kind of meh. Bailey on three though. Yeah, Bailey Bailey's winning. Uh next we have a big one. A lot to talk about here. World heavyweight championship match. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Who wants to start us off? This is where I believe they big, what's it called? A audible had to be called of CM Punk getting hurt. That's why we have Drew in this spot. I think it was all along supposed to be Seth versus Punk. The whole time. I think he said it on the podcast that he did with Ariel. He's like, I think they were going to put me with Seth, but I got hurt. And that would have truly made it the biggest WrestleMania of all time if you had Seth and Punk and uh, Cody Roman Rock stuff going on, like CM Punk being in that mix. As much as I'm not the biggest CM Punk fan, the star power, you can't deny, um, that would have been bigger. I do think that once an audible was called, Drew McIntyre picked up the ball and absolutely ran with it, and he's he's been doing great. Um, he does what he does best. Play ahead of the year. Shitty situation. Yeah. He is – yeah, he's, Drew McIntyre doesn't really miss. Uh, so while I do think it would have been better to have CM Punk there – I'm not mad at Drew McIntyre being there. I think I think he's earned it. I think it's a compelling enough match that I'm looking forward to it. Uh what do we think uh what do, who do y'all have winning this match and and where what like where do we go after that? Ooh, I want to answer this one. Go ahead. I say Drew wins it. The Rock comes and interferes, causes Seth to lose. Seth, Rock, SummerSlam, let's do it. 
Ooh, that's the that's the first I've heard of that. Like, I like it. Did you just come up come up with that off the dome? Off the dome, especially after Monday when Seth called them out. I don't. I I I like that. I like that. Uh, building up to a Seth and Rock main event at SummerSlam, I could get behind that. Uh, I personally, I see uh, Senor Money in the Bank, Damian Priest trying to cash in here. What okay. what Ooh. what do y'all think about that? It's it makes now or never. Sense. Because I think that, and we've we've talked about this conspiracy, uh, I believe, last week on Wrestle Wednesday, where, and I can't take full credit for this. I saw some of this online, um, but I'm calling that uh, Damian Priest tries to cash in and is stopped in some way, shape, or form by the rest of Judgment Day. You know, we've. We've talked about maybe there's not a contract in that briefcase. Maybe the briefcases got switched, something like that. And he's going to try to cash in to no avail. And then Drew McIntyre will be the leader of Judgment Day following WrestleMania. That's what I think. And like I said, can't take full credit for that one. Kind of stole it from uh, a couple people online. But that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. But I, if I'm being honest, I like Angel's idea better. Like, I like, I like that idea better. Because Senior Money in the Bank hasn't cashed it in, and there's been so many times he could have done it. This Monday he could have done it. There's so many opportunities, and... Now they're making memes about him on Twitter because, <laughs> like, dude, when are you going to cash it? Like, what are you doing when Seth can get, is getting his ass whooped? He's in the True. back chilling. In his, Catering. Uh, he's at his day job managing a hot topic. <laughs> um, Bisexual undertaker. Who do, who do you have, Cap? I have Drew winning, and Seth takes a little break does his thing then we have mr cm punk come back at SummerSlam and go after drew with all the stuff he's been talking i like that too i i like that you said seth takes a little break um i what i would want is for seth to take a little hiatus nothing too terribly long like, I don't think he needs to be gone for a year or anything like that. Like four months? Yeah, four months, take a nice break, hang out with the family, and then come back as... The architect. The architect, or, like, kind of a more serious character. Uh, you know, the y'all have more of an issue with the... Uh, or at least Angel does have more of an issue with like the flamboyant outfits that he wears and all that Me than and I do. Yeah. I think that it's part of his, like part of his character and it doesn't really bother me, but I will say this is my least favorite iteration of Seth Rollins. Um, while I still think it's good cause I think anything Seth Rollins does is good. It's my least favorite. Um, so I, I'd like to see him come back as more of a serious guy. I like how we don't question his wrestling at all. Like perfect in the ring, but no, you perfect. could never. I mean, I think for people going right now, there is like I don't know if there's anybody that I would put above Seth Rollins in terms of in ring ability. Like for me, those the the. Shoot, I would put my top top four would be I'll take two from WWE and two from AEW. I I would say my top guys that are currently going is Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, uh Kenny Omega, even though he's not really going right now, like because because he has the uh the stomach issue and all that. But like when he's going, he's the best. And Mac and uh, no. Uh, and uh and uh will osprey 
those are my four best that are currently doing it. And I wouldn't necessarily put them in any order. I think they're all like at that elite level. Seth Rollins in ring ability is nobody does it better. But I, I agree. I agree. I just I hate I hate the outfits, man. People keep wondering him for it. Every person and his wife. I'm uh, over the whole Becky thing is getting overplayed now, but the outfits I get. Yeah. But so we have I have uh I have Drew winning. I have Drew. You have Drew Angel. Yeah, Drew for sure. Or maybe Senor Money in the Bank. Yeah, I think he cashes in, but I think he's unsuccessful. But, you know, as long as he stays away from the Universal Championship, he can do whatever he wants. Uh, but that brings us to the main event, the moment that the past two years have been building up to. It's Cody versus Roman winner takes all winner takes the biggest prize in wrestling what do y'all think well first let's let's all kind of talk about it uh angel why don't you tell us because because i know you're invested in this one and me and you are on two different sides of this so what got us here what uh I know we talked about it a little yesterday with the the, the tag match on night two, but give I'm us a little the, more history. I'm on the side of good. I'm with the cancer survivor, Roman Reigns. Oh, bro, you gonna? That's a low blow. That is a. I just want to start with that. I just want to start with blow. that. Blow. I'll acknowledge that. I'll acknowledge <laughs> that. So this all started with last year's hot bloodline feud. Obviously, Cody could not retain at WrestleMania. And although throughout the year they didn't really f like fight, I know Cody did, did keep mentioning like I need to finish my story a hundred million times. Uh, and thankfully he retained and won back to back Royal Rumbles and <coughs> ruining one of the best. WrestleMania main events of all time, The Rock versus Roman Reigns. He came in here and ruined it. And now we have Cody versus Roman Reigns this Sunday. I wonder well, what let, the... let me ask you this, because you just said that. Would you, like, because me personally, I'm very excited about both main events, the night one and the night two. Would you still, at this point, with all the buildup and everything, and getting heel rock back and all that stuff, would you prefer the original uh, Rock versus Roman to what we what we have now? If it was a heel Rock, yes. If but I don't like, think you would have gotten heel Rock if it was if, if it was baby see, baby face Rock saying Tribal Queef. Then no. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think I think that's what it would have been though. I think he would have definitely been the baby face and Roman would have been the heel. Um. And I think this is better, to be honest. Like, like, yeah. remember when they booed The Rock, hardcore, and now they're cheering for him. Like, shoot, how would you have thought? I wouldn't have. Would you have thought a few months ago that I would have been hating on The Rock as much? Like in the in the past, like uh, I don't know, month and a half, two months uh, leading up to Mania, like. I didn't hate The Rock before this, like, but you know, this the, it speaks to how good of a, a performer he is. He really has made me dislike him, and the goat. So that's why he's the goat. That's why, like, he's a true heel, which hard to pull off in today's like wrestling. He had not been a heel since 2004, 5, 3, something like that. And it just came back naturally. I love it. I wish he I, did that more know. in movies. Just be the villain, Rock. Just be the villain. And he has the greatest entrance this time right now. I still think Cody's is better. 
the main the the main the only thing I'll say like I I love the rocks entrance the the like electric entrance the song itself and all that is great the no only thing needed. yeah the only thing that gives Cody the edge to me is not even the pyro like I I'm a I'm a pyro junkie I love it when they use pyro but it's that first shot when he shows up like in the doorway with the smoke coming down like all fast and like there's the big pop like that that part gets me every time i i, I love that part so <laughs> but uh yeah the rocks entrance like he's got whoever whoever like we're big into this whoever made the graphics and stuff for his entrance 10 out of 10 give them a raise because that is the coolest looking like graphics that i've seen in wwe in a very long time that's what happens when you, that's what happens when you get rid of all those all of vincent's friends that haven't done anything recently and aren't up to date with technology exactly which can we say how do you this is something that i don't think we've talked about on this show because it's been a thing since before we even started this show. It's been a thing for a, a couple years now. I've never liked like the little 3D on-screen things that they do for the wrestlers. Like how when Roman comes out, it's like the big Roman. And like when Drew comes out, it's the swords. And I've, I've never liked that. I've th- kind of thought they look just yeah, like... That was a Vince cool. thing. Yeah. Very cartoonish. Uh, they look like just they're all really badly animated. <laughs> like, I just I don't like them. I would love I, the old school Titans Trons from the '90s to come back. The Attitude Era, where they played their little big achievements, big moves they did. Yeah, I like that too. Uh, and bring back the big fist from SmackDown. Oh, iconic. big show fist. Yeah, <laughs> but all right, so. The way that, and if you're new to wrestling, haven't watched in a while, whatever, that's kind of the theme of this episode. Um, If you really want to get the full background of how we got here to this main event, you need to, before this weekend, go look up the uh, post Royal Rumble press conference uh, where Cody chooses that he's going to face Roman. That is truly the starting point to this chapter of this story. If you want to get how we've... I don't know if you have the time uh, to get the full history if you're new coming into it of exactly when the bloodline started and all that, because that's been running for, what, uh, three years at this point? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or so. So I don't know if you have time in the like two days before WrestleMania to to catch up on all of that. If you do kudos, you're in for a fun ride. Uh, But if you want to know how we got to this chapter of where we're at, it starts at that press conference and, and everything that has happened after that has just been banger after banger after banger. And I don't think this match is going to be any different. I think this, this is going to be a match that people talk about for you know they'll be talking about this match 20 years from now yep tell me how it ends how it ends this is another one and it's like kudos to wwe for good writing i can truly see it going either way i can like i can see cody finally finishing the story and getting the title, that's what I would like to happen. Y'all know I'm a big Cody stan. I love Cody Rhodes. He's my favorite wrestler going right now. Um, so I would love to see him get the belt and finally defeat the bloodline and all that. I could also see them wanting Roman to break. You, We've been talking about him breaking uh, Hulk Hogan's record. I could see them wanting him to break Bruno San Martino's record. Um, I could truly see that and have him hold it for another, I think that would be another year and a half. Almost Um, two years. Next WrestleMania. Like, I could see that happening. 
And while that's something that I'm not like, I would, if I'm being honest, if that were the case and like the, say the bloodline were to get involved because we have bloodline rules, assuming that rock and Roman win the, win the first one. If, if uh, the Bloodline got involved and beat Cody, Cody loses at Mania again, there would be a, about a five-minute stretch where I'd be like, God, like they did the same thing again. I'm annoyed. Like Cody should have won, and I, I'm over it. I'm over the Bloodline. Then that, that five minutes would pass, and I would be like, huh, there's a lot of crap they can still do with the Bloodline, and you can have the rock turd on Roman – you can have all that stuff as long I will be happy as long as at some point Cody beats Roman. It, it doesn't have to happen this WrestleMania for me. Uh, but as long as at some point Cody is victorious, I'll be happy with the whole story. Um, I think that's good writing. Like I could see it going either way. And he just saw, he just renewed his contract too. So, we got Cody for a long time. Yeah, he's just oh, yeah. Cody's deal. Cody's here for the long haul. And uh I did see a poster, a graphic for WrestleMania 41, and it was Roman Reigns and The Rock just facing off. That would be dope. But this gives Cody plenty of time to find help. A little MJF. That's what my thing is. I think all this stuff's going to go down. Seth is going to be hurt in the back because he's going to get beat down. All the bloodlines out there. Who else is there to help help Cody? No one's there to help him. <clears throat> After the bloodlines there, beating him down, beating him down. Then you have... I'm better than, better than, better than, better. And you know it, I'm better than better than better than that plays. The crowd goes insane. And here comes MJF just walking out and just looking. And he shakes his head, takes that scarf off, takes off to the ring. Which and turns again, if you are <laughs> Uh, if you're if you're new to wrestling or haven't watched in a while, what we're talking about is MJF Maxwell Jacob Friedman. He was Cody's protege in AEW. Has since become the biggest thing that AEW has ever produced. Um, and with the help had, of Cody Rhodes, with the help of Cody Rhodes, and uh was their champ for over a year and now is mysteriously not on the AEW roster and his merch has been taken off of AEW sites and, and whatever that other one is uh pro wrestling tees yep dot com yeah <clears throat> so it's kind of like the Signs are pointing to him making the jump to WWE. What better time than at WrestleMania? And the guy's a bona fide star. There's nobody better on the... Well, there might be a couple people better. Uh, but he's the cream of the crop when it comes to on-the-mic talent. Uh, he would definitely hold his own with anybody in WWE. I don't know that I can say he's better than everybody in WWE on the mic, but he can hold his own against anybody. Um, and his in-ring ability is solid as well. So if he makes the jump, it's going to it's gonna, gonna get a big reaction. It's going to bring all eight viewers of AEW to WWE. <laughs> Especially what he tweeted out Ooh. today. Yeah, MJ why don't you share that? Uh, I know y'all both sent it to me today. M MJF versus The Rock? What? 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 He tweeted out, quote tweeting The Rock, saying, first you steal my gl uh, glorious idea to lash Cody. Now you tried to cop art from my ex. 
I'm a fan, dot, dot, dot. But please leave me be, do we? So who is MJF's ex is what I want to know. I was not privy to that information. Just some random, some random girl that was not an industry. Girl named, yeah, Naomi Rose Blum. She painted a picture of The Rock lifting Cody's face up all bloodied after he whipped him with the bell and everything. And The Rock bought that from her. Money like that. And we're going to give it and send it to Johnny the Dad to hang out yeah. in the wall. Yes. I mean, if they were being honest, I'd sell it. But <laughs> yeah. I got bills to pay. Uh, but I, yeah, I think this, this meant, here's what I'll say moving forward after WrestleMania, as big of a Cody Stan as I am, and I want him to win this match, I'll be okay with it if he doesn't, because I trust Triple H and the writing to do something good, uh, from it. What I want if Cody doesn't win. I want a Cody heel turn and I want this to be like Cody got screwed again. Everybody's going to start. Nobody's or they're never going to stop screwing Cody over. They've been screwing him since way back in the day when they made him wear that goofy mask and they're screwing him today. And so, you know what? I'm going to start looking out for number one and I'm not going to be the good guy anymore. And I'm going to get what I want. And he, you know, like he goes on this tear of just being, you know, a despicable version of Cody Rhodes and, and then wins as a heel that like that to me would be great. Cause I don't, while I would be okay with him losing, I don't want to see another year of the same thing. Like I want to see another dimension to this story, so what I'm if, okay with it if if that something like that happens. Next year we get babyface Roman versus heel Cody, and everybody's booing Cody and like that would be a 360. That would be cool. Yeah, so many possibilities. Really cool. The possibilities in wrestling right now is amazing. I love it. Wrestling is cool again. Anything can happen. Yeah. I'll be tuning in. I don't care. Who do y'all have? Who do you think's gonna win? Who do y'all have winning? Cody. I have Cody. I also have Cody. Um, I think it's time for the let them to let Roman rest. He's been through a lot. He's been doing a lot. Leukemia is no joke. It's he's literally taking pills every day, working out every day. It's rough. Yep, and you can tell in his body too. Like I mentioned a few months back, I was like, "Man, I noticed something was different. He don't have the same build." And I mean, now we know why. It's it's hard to carry all that while fighting leukemia. Still, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like it's kind of one of those things where, like, if he wins and this streak keeps going, you're like, "Good for Roman Reigns!" Like fighting leukemia and doing this like at this level still, like, good for you, bro. But then if they take the belt off him and it gets to rest and all that, you're like, good for you, dude. Like, you deserve mm-hmm. it. Take take some rest. You're, it, it's kind of a win-win when it comes to Roman. Like, I still say The Rock screws him over. It's the ultimate heel move. And then he really is. Let Roman. him go do his thing for a year. Or do we see, like, a what if Roman – What if Roman beats Cody and whether that's the bloodline gets involved? I feel like the bloodline would have to get involved for that. Like, I don't think they're going to have him beat Cody straight up. Um, But bloodline gets involved. They beat down Cody. Roman retains. And then after the match, the rock beats down Roman and says like, I was always the head of the table or something like that. Is that like what you see happening? Yeah, the rocks. The rocks gonna end up on top. Well, I don't know because usually when the Cody wins, they like that's the main. Whoever wins WrestleMania is usually the last guy on the screen. But we'll see. That would make for one hell of a Raw after WrestleMania. 
Oh yeah. Crazy. We still got the raw after mania. Oh my. Oh my. Maybe the show might return. Friend of the show, Mr. Seamus. Little Irish power. We're we're rooting for a Seamus return at Mania at some point. I don't think that's gonna happen, but <laughs> but the Raw after Mania, give me Seamus and all his uh glowing uh glory there. Uh friend of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Uh, yeah, friend of the show, Seamus. Um yeah, I, there's so many ways that this can go. The one thing that I think is guaranteed, we're going to come out of this WrestleMania with a lot more wrestling fans than when we went in with. I think yeah. I think you're going to see numbers. I think the numbers for that Raw after Mania are going to be through the roof. And this is going to be literally the first time Triple H has been fully in charge of everything no one in his ear this is him and so there's nobody i would trust more with that than triple h exactly so because they actually have writers <laughs> yes. yes we do well, but, can't wait for this weekend guys should we drop the bomb on the weekend plans Okay, so we have had a little bit of a change in our uh, WrestleMania uh, plans. Nothing too drastic. We are still going to do a live stream where you can watch along with us. But due to the original plan was uh, the live stream night one, and then all of us were going to get together for night two. And we were going to invite everybody out to come to uh, Dave and Buster's or wherever we decided to do it and do like a watch party. Due to us all being in different locations uh, and none of us live in the same city. uh, And we got Angel's got work things going on. I've got school things going on. Cap's got work and a bunch of other things going on like It just, the logistics didn't match up for that. So we are just going to do a live stream both nights. You can uh, tune in and uh, it'll be up on our YouTube. Uh, You can watch our live stream. I think, Cap, what's it going to, what's it going to stream on? It's going to stream on everything, right? Yes. Uh, Yeah. So it's going to stream on everything. You can watch us on YouTube, uh, X, X, Twitch. Facebook question mark? Facebook, yes. Uh, Facebook, Facebook uh, Twitch, all that good stuff. Anywhere that you go to watch streams, you'll be able to uh, tune in and uh, watch along with us. That is still a plan. We just will not be having the in-person kind of watch party that we were planning on. But it's still going to be a blast. And hear all of our uh, ridiculous wrestling takes for two nights in a row and uh watch us uh cry for Cody or or you know whatever else just, just watch along with us have a good time uh we'll be active in the comments and you know we'll, maybe we'll pull some of y'all in if y'all want to uh maybe maybe if y'all want to get a little bit of screen time we can we can work something out and make that happen so yeah should My- be a good time my dream WrestleMania scenario is somehow The Rock gets him involved into this main event and wins it all, and he wins The Rock as champion. <laughs> I'm still lighting my candle up just in case. I don't think there's any chance of that happening, but you know what? If it does happen, Angel said it first, and he called it. <laughs> you want to make it? You want to? I know you're a gambling man. Would you like to put some money on that? No, those odds are pretty low. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. I was fishing. Uh, but, all right, y'all. So make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to All Things Athletically Declined Sports. Check out our two new YouTube channels, uh, the Athletically Declined Gaming. Uh, me, Cap, and Jet Boyer are going to be hitting up some Call of Duty later tonight. Rebirth uh, Island. Rebirth is Island is back. 
Uh, so we're going to be doing that, uh, kicking off season three of Warzone. Uh, and check out AD Media, where you will now get all of your uh, athletically declined content that is not sports related. So you're going to get your reality TV. We're going to do uh, later this month. Me, my wife, and uh, Mr. Fantasy are going to be doing a Taylor Swift album review for when her new album drops. So stuff like that, that'll all be on AD Media. Check that out. And guys, as always, violence is always the answer. All right, y'all. We will see y'all WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. Yeah.